The real reason narcissists are so evil, because demons easily use them. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. I want to take a moment to express how proud I am of each one of you for being here today. Your presence indicates that you are on a healing journey after experiencing narcissistic abuse. I understand why you've come to this space. If you are new, I warmly welcome you to our community of thrivers. Here, we support one another in our healing processes. If you find our content helpful, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and leaving a comment below to share your thoughts or experiences. So, let's talk about what really matters. We need to discuss the profound impact that narcissists have on our lives. It is essential to recognize that their behavior is often influenced by dark spiritual forces. If you have experienced this firsthand, you likely understand the unsettling feelings that arise from being in a relationship with a narcissist. Many of you have witnessed disturbing events within these relationships and even in your families. You may have found yourself lying next to someone who seemed to be spiritually tormented, talking in their sleep, or engaging with otherworldly entities. These experiences can feel completely surreal and abnormal far removed from what we would typically expect in our spiritual lives. The behaviors exhibited by narcissists and the way they treat you are intricately linked to a larger spiritual battle. If you are new to my channel, I want to emphasize that I firmly believe that narcissism and the abuse that comes with it are connected to spiritual warfare. This issue runs much deeper than just a psychological disorder, it touches on our very souls. Understanding this connection can help explain why you often feel confused or even crazy. Narcissists have a unique ability to manipulate your emotions, causing you pain and leading you through experiences that you never thought you would endure, experiences you wouldn't wish upon your worst enemy. The mental anguish and turmoil that come from such a relationship can be overwhelming. Emerging as a thriver from this kind of abuse is a significant achievement because you have navigated a deeply challenging situation that many do not survive. The nature of this abuse is severe and cannot be understated. It involves emotional manipulation that breaks a person down and leaves them feeling shattered. This kind of mistreatment not only affects your mental state but also seeps into your spiritual well-being. When you are consumed with the narcissist's needs and trying to maintain the relationship, it can feel like you are losing yourself. You may find yourself constantly trying to please them, even when nothing you do seems to work. This relentless cycle can lead to self-destructive behaviors. As you become more entangled in the dynamics of this toxic relationship, you may find it increasingly difficult to connect with God or hear His guidance clearly. The enemy of your progress, represented by the pain and emotional turmoil inflicted by the narcissist, can create barriers between you and your spiritual connection. If you are not vigilant, the suffering caused by their actions can keep you away from God, making it even harder to heal and move forward. Today, I want to share with you a deeper insight and perspective on the unsettling reality that narcissists are often easily influenced and driven by demonic forces. It is important to understand the reasons behind this behavior, as well as how you can navigate this challenging situation and emerge as a thriver on your healing journey. A thriver is someone who is actively healing and striving to become the best version of themselves. This process involves rediscovering and reaffirming your identity after experiencing the trauma of narcissistic abuse. Thriving means you are allowing yourself to break free from the harmful programming that the abuse instilled in you. Think of it like this, you are essentially cleaning out a computer that has been filled with outdated and harmful software. You are not just fixing it, you are replacing it entirely. In fact, you might even decide to discard the old computer altogether. As you heal, you are downloading new information and insights about yourself and the dynamics of narcissistic relationships. You begin to understand the playbook of the narcissist and gain clarity on how their childhood experiences shape them. At the same time, you reflect on how your own childhood may have influenced your vulnerability to entering into a relationship with a narcissist. For those of you who have encountered a romantic relationship with a narcissist, it is crucial to recognize that the underlying issues for a narcissist are often rooted in deep emotional pain and trauma. This pain manifests in various ways, but ultimately, it leads to one predominant emotion, anger. This anger becomes a driving force in their lives, making them susceptible to manipulation by demonic influences. 
Satan can easily exploit the vulnerabilities of a narcissist, confusing them and prompting them to react or overreact in harmful ways. This ongoing struggle creates a cycle of torment that distorts their judgment and keeps them trapped in a state of stagnation. The mind of a narcissist can become a playground for Satan, filled with dark thoughts and destructive emotions. Their hearts are often consumed by anger, and it is within this anger that demonic forces thrive. Many of you may have noticed that dealing with a narcissist feels like engaging with someone who is addicted to chaos and pain. There always seems to be a crisis or conflict that needs attention, yet they are often incapable of resolving these issues themselves. Instead, they rely on others, particularly those who embody light and positivity, to come to their rescue. This reliance stems from their deep-seated darkness and confusion. The narcissist is misled by these demonic influences every day, which perpetuates their cycles of turmoil. Many individuals who have been affected by narcissistic abuse struggle to focus on God and truly connect with Him. This challenge can be particularly evident among those who attend church. You may see people shouting, stomping, praying, preaching, clapping, and saying Amen, yet underneath that enthusiastic exterior, they may be narcissistic in ways that are deeply troubling. The devil plays a significant role in helping these individuals maintain a facade, allowing them to hide behind a tough mask. For many narcissists, it is easy to play church, pretending to be engaged and caring, all while mirroring the emotions of others to protect the mask they wear. This deception can be orchestrated by demonic influences, further complicating their behavior. Anger serves as a foothold for Satan in the lives of narcissists. This is a critical element of their struggle. The anger they harbor becomes a disaster waiting to happen, leading to destructive behaviors and harmful projections. Everything a narcissist places onto you, whether through accusations, blame, or criticism, reflects their inner turmoil and self-loathing. It brings us back to their profound brokenness and the deep-seated self-hatred they often carry. When a narcissist is trapped in anger, it also highlights their extreme self-centeredness. This self-centeredness is the root of their behavior, even amid their self-hatred. They are so consumed with their own pain and grievances that they cannot process past traumas. Their unwillingness and inability to forgive keep them stuck in this cycle of anger. In this way, they become idolatrous, placing their own feelings and experiences above everything else. Unlike survivors, narcissists do not represent justice. Their anger is rooted in a selfish desire for recognition and validation. As a survivor of narcissistic abuse, I can attest to the anger that often emerges during the healing process. Many survivors go through stages of anger as they confront the reality of their experiences. This anger is justified. It often stems from grieving relationships and situations that were never genuine. Survivors may need to mourn the loss of connections with family members or friends who were toxic. This process can evoke a righteous anger, one that seeks to bring awareness and acknowledgement to the pain endured. The key difference between the anger of a survivor and that of a narcissist lies in the eventual healing process. Survivors are capable of moving beyond their anger. As they heal and thrive, they learn to let go of that anger, recognizing that holding on to it only hinders their progress. You, as a survivor, are likely an empathetic person, a chosen vessel of compassion. Hate does not reside in your heart for long. While feelings of anger may arise, you possess the ability to reflect and engage in introspection, preventing hate from taking root. Survivors of narcissistic abuse ultimately learn how to forgive in their own time and manner. This journey is essential for personal growth and emotional freedom. Unlike narcissists, who are often consumed by their emotions, survivors recognize that holding on to anger and resentment is not sustainable. They cannot remain in a state of hatred or treat others with disdain. Instead, they strive to foster understanding and compassion, even for those who have hurt them. Many of us who identify as true empaths and survivors of NPD do not harbor the same kind of anger that can be found in narcissists. If you take a moment to reflect on the wickedness of how pain impacts your life, you may notice that the anger it stirs within you can feel almost demonic in nature. This intense anger can lead you to a point where you start to mirror the very behaviors of the narcissist. The longer you stay entangled in this toxic relationship, the more likely it is that your heart may become filled with anger. 
This phenomenon explains why some individuals eventually adopt narcissistic traits after prolonged exposure to a narcissist. Similarly, people raised by narcissistic parents often develop these traits as well. In such environments, individuals may unintentionally absorb the negative influences that thrive on anger and resentment. Feelings of being wronged, knowing that you have been treated unfairly, and the instinct to defend yourself can keep you in a constant state of alertness. When living with a narcissist, you are always on the defensive, always prepared for an unpredictable outburst. Each day can bring a new and often worse version of the person you are dealing with, creating an environment of uncertainty and fear. The underlying reason for this behavior is the profound influence of demonic forces on the narcissist. They dwell in a state of anger, often projecting their internal struggles onto you. Their anger towards themselves manifests as anger towards you. They may feel resentful because of their own failures and shortcomings. When they see your resilience, your ability to love and forgive, it only deepens their frustration. They are envious of your authenticity and the qualities that they lack. This jealousy fuels their anger and self-hatred, which they often direct at you. A significant portion of the hatred you experience from a narcissist is rooted in their connection to satanic influences. They are overwhelmed by feelings of hatred that permeate their being. Their anger is directed not only at you, but also at life itself and sometimes even at God. It is crucial for you to understand that their dysfunction is not your fault. The way they attempt to undermine you after you have given your all in the relationship is a reflection of their own issues, not yours. It is essential to recognize that you should not allow them to manipulate your emotions or set you up for anger. Engaging in this cycle only serves to harm yourself further. When you dwell in anger, you are not only affecting your emotional well-being, but also your overall quality of life. To truly rule your spirit means to have control over your emotions and responses. This requires nurturing your spirit through prayer, establishing a relationship with God, and treating others with kindness and respect. It involves embodying the principle of treating your neighbors as you would like to be treated. A person with a pure heart and good intentions reflects self-control in their actions and interactions. I share this with you from my own journey, this is where I currently stand and what I strive to practice daily. I acknowledge that there have been moments on my channel where I exhibited anger and fluctuated between different emotional states. These instances stemmed from struggles with self-control over my emotions. The most effective way to deal with a narcissist and protect yourself is to starve them of your emotions. By refusing to engage with them on their level, you can prevent them from using you, hurting you, and keeping you trapped in a cycle of pain. Allowing anger and sadness to consume you will only serve to anchor you in that painful experience, making it difficult to move forward. Consider the biblical story of Cain and Abel. Cain's jealousy of Abel drove him to commit the ultimate betrayal, he killed his brother. This jealousy was rooted in anger, the anger that arises when you see someone achieving what you cannot, or possessing something you lack. This sense of comparison and competition, even when there is no real competition, breeds resentment. The core of this behavior is anger, which spirals into negative emotions and actions like jealousy, stealing, cheating, and abusive behavior, whether verbal or physical. All of these destructive actions stem from that initial feeling of anger. Cain's story illustrates the destructive power of negative emotions, akin to witchcraft. Narcissists embody this concept, they represent what witchcraft truly looks like. Many people misunderstand witchcraft, believing it to be solely about crystals, stones, or tarot cards. However, true witchcraft resides in the heart and intentions of an individual. It manifests through ill intentions, wishing harm upon others, and spreading negativity through gossip. You may have experienced this with narcissistic family members who thrive on talking about others, sharing rumors, and engaging in destructive conversations. This behavior is a form of witchcraft fueled by jealousy, which in turn is rooted in their own anger and dissatisfaction with life. It is crucial for you to take your power back. Snatch it away from the narcissist and protect yourself from the emotions that this demon wishes to provoke in you. Thriving and moving forward in life requires you to recognize the strength within you. This strength lies in your ability to shut down the negative influences of the narcissist and establish boundaries. 
If you find yourself in a situation where you must limit contact with a narcissist, especially if children are involved, learn how to maintain distance. You do not need to be available at their beck and call or respond to every demand they make. By controlling the situation and refusing to let their actions get under your skin, you can remain true to yourself and avoid being drawn into their chaotic world. Taking back your power involves recognizing that you should not allow anger to lead you into sinful behavior. Many individuals find themselves back in narcissistic relationships because they have not fully processed the pain of past experiences. I am learning this lesson as well. The devil often sets us up for repeating these toxic situations because we carry unresolved feelings from previous relationships. Anger, trust issues, difficulties with forgiveness, and lingering resentment can all contribute to a cycle of dysfunction. If you still wish bad upon the narcissist or harbor negative feelings, you risk repeating the same patterns. To truly thrive, it is essential to engage in self-reflection and healing. This means addressing the anger and pain from your past so that you do not carry them into new relationships. It requires a conscious effort to let go of resentment and to focus on your own emotional well-being. By doing so, you can break the cycle and create a healthier, more fulfilling life for yourself. We must learn how to truly let go of our past experiences and not allow our emotions to backfire, ultimately giving the narcissist the upper hand. Just because you are no longer in a relationship with a narcissist does not automatically mean you are thriving or doing well. If you find yourself struggling to heal and constantly preoccupied with thoughts like, what is the narcissist doing now? Or why did they treat me this way? You are not regaining your power. Instead, you are still caught up in the toxic cycle of their influence, failing to recognize that this is a spiritual battle. It is crucial to armor yourself with strength and resilience as you engage in personal growth and spiritual maturation. You need to become emotionally and mentally strong because there is no time for weakness in this journey. Once you have processed your initial heartbreak and tears, it is essential to remember who you truly are. You must walk with confidence and treat yourself with the respect and love you deserve. At this stage in my own healing journey, I am becoming more intentional about what I need to do to become the best version of myself. This includes refusing to let the devil provoke anger within me to the point where I lose my character. Every time we allow ourselves to be drawn into anger and negativity, we inadvertently grant the narcissist a victory. We send them a message that they still have power over us, that we are engaging with them on their level. When you are consumed by anger, you become distracted, allowing the narcissist to continue their plotting and scheming against you. Dwelling in anger not only affects your mental and emotional well-being, but also hinders your spiritual growth. When you are stuck in this negative emotional space, you block the blessings that are meant for you. Bitterness and unforgiving energy act as barriers, preventing you from expressing gratitude and experiencing joy. If you are currently in a place of healing, I commend you. Keep thriving and moving forward. If you are striving to reach that point, do not give up. Keep pushing through the challenges, and remember that your journey is valid and important. I understand the pain and anger many of you are feeling, it is justified. If you have been wronged and truly feel like a victim, your anger is righteous. You are owed the right to feel that way. However, it is important to allow God to handle that anger for you. God is aware of the injustices you have faced and is deeply troubled by what has been done to you. But God also wants you to take control of your emotions. By doing so, you can facilitate your healing process, maintain a pure heart, and continue to attract the blessings you deserve. To begin transforming your life, start by reversing and changing the narrative surrounding your experiences. This means changing your heart and your perspective on what has happened to you. By doing so, you can attract healthy and positive relationships into your life. You can achieve this, and you absolutely deserve it. Remember, you are more than capable of creating the life you want. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. I truly appreciate your presence, blessed one. Please take care of yourself and remember to be kind to yourself as you continue on your healing journey. Keep moving forward and do not forget what drives narcissists to behave like the demons they are. It is important not to let their negativity pull you down to their level. As we wrap up, I encourage you to like this video, share your thoughts in the comments, 
and subscribe to our channel for more content that supports your healing. Until next time, stay blessed and stay true. Goodbye, everyone.